Has lightning struck twice for Jordan Peele? You too. It's your boy the ninth Hokage, Busy Burns, man. We're about to do a review, a spoiler review for us. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest you get up on out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Or if you don't care to see it and you just want to know how good it was or how bad it was, you found the right spot. But um, off rip, this movie was phenomenal, bro. I mean, just great. A great, 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 great movie. Another one from Jordan Peele. Um, it's still kind of more thriller, but it's a horror thriller. So it's not like Get Out or Get Out, which to me is just strictly thriller. Um, but the movie was phenomenal, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just going to jump right into it. The movie opens up with a text or a title screen telling us that America has like these millions and millions and millions of miles of like underground tunnels that's abandoned and... And they're not used for anything. They just are left there for no reason. We don't really know what they were for or anything. But uh, and then after that, we open up and we have young Adelaide, who was the main character of this movie. And she's watching a commercial for Hands Across America, something that happened in the 80s, I'm guessing. I'm too young to know, so I don't know. Um, and I guess it was this thing where Americans could come together, you know, by holding hands, giving each other hugs and stuff like that. Then we go off into where her and her parents are on a boardwalk on the beach. The dad's playing a game, he wins her a thriller shirt, which is gonna come into effect later on. So as they're walking, you can kind of see like the parents are kind of beefing, but kind of not. The dad's drunk, the mom's not really off it. Um, he wants to play whack-a-mole, the mom wants to go to the bathroom. She's like, yo, watch Adelaide. He's like, I got this, I got this. Of course, she walks off. Now it kind of starts off like a fairy tale because she's eating an apple even kind of biblical in a way, you know, and um, she wanders off and ends up in the House of Mirrors. And during this trip to the House of Mirrors, she runs into a mirror image that hasn't turned around, it's still facing the opposite way. Cut. We see that she was traumatized by this and she hasn't spoken a word since. And the parents have her going to therapy and they're like, I just want my daughter back. How long is she going to be like this? The therapist is like, hey, maybe she could draw or, or paint or dance something to make her get rid of those memories or repressed memories or that trauma. Jump to the future. We're here with the Wilsons and the older Adelaide. We're taking a trip to, I guess, the beach house where her parents had or whatever. And here we meet the main characters, which is Adelaide, who's played by Lupita Nyong'o. We have Gabe, played by Winston Duke. We have Zora, who's played by Shahadi... Um, oh, what's her name? We have Zora, who's... No. We have Zora, who's played by Shahadi Wright Joseph. We have Jason, played by Evan Alex. And... You know, they're kind of tripping, they're kind of tripping, they're listening to music, and um, they're taking this whole... And they're taking this trip to the beach house, like I said, and... Um, so they're on this way to the beach house, and Adelaide's kind of like already not really feeling this or whatever. And she's noticing all these, uh, these like, coincidences, like 11-11 is everywhere or whatever. And Gabe, her husband, wants to go to the beach. She's like, let's go. Let's go hit the boardwalk. You know, we're going to meet friends. And she's just like, nah, nah, nah. So she talks him into going to this lake. The lake is boring. They ended up going to the beach. On their way to the beach, Adelaide sees this homeless man being put into the uh, ambulance. It's this homeless man that she's seen when she was a young girl holding up a Jeremiah 1111 sign. Now, that sign is important because Jeremiah 1111 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Which it must be really powerful. And like I said, she, she sees a lot of 11-11 everywhere. So she's noticing all these coincidences and then they meet their friends, uh, Kitty and Josh, and they have their twins with them. And um, Kitty's played by uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Moss. And uh, yeah, I, they, you know, she's not really feeling herself. She's telling, uh, she's telling Kitty that she doesn't really... Uh, get along, she's not good at explaining herself to people, you know. Then we see uh, Jason playing uh, in the sand, he's building tunnels instead of sandcastles, which is weird. But he ends up walking off. 
somehow he ends up in the house of mirrors. He comes out and he sees what seems to be a human scarecrow standing there with bloody hands. Now Adelaide notices this and freaks out and goes running for him, looking for him, and she finds him and she just bugged out. They return back to the beach house and Adelaide's still not like herself. She's still nervous. She's still like jumpy. And she just tells her husband Gabe, like, listen, man, this, this traumatic experience happened when I was a little girl. And I haven't spoken about it since. And then we flash back to that same scene when she was young in the House of Mirrors. And the, look, the, 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 the uh, mirror image that was facing the other way finally turns around. So we see that, okay, that's what traumatized her. This little girl was actually really there. And she looked just like her. Um, from there, the little son comes in and he's like, hey, there's a family standing in my driveway. Now from here on out, I'm like, yo, like Jordan Peele is just jumping right into it. We ain't playing no games. Like we just gonna start right here and just gonna get into this action. So the husband Gabe goes outside and he's like, yo, man, I'm not, you know, what y'all doing here? Adelaide nervous. She's like, I'm calling the cops. So she calls the cops. They say that they 15 minutes away. So now Gabe is getting a little nervous because the people are not saying nothing. You feel me? So he goes in. He's like, yo, call the cops, bro. Like they they, they, they acting kind of crazy out here. Adelaide's like, I already got him on the phone. They're 14 minutes away. Gabe grabs a bat, he goes to him and says, look, bro, if y'all want to get crazy, y'all want to get it in, we can get crazy. And that's when that family starts to move in him. And they're darting coming each kind of way. He slams the door, locks it, and of course, they find a key under the rock, and they open the door, they bully their way in, the other one breaks through the window, no, I think one breaks through the window or something, and um, the other one comes through the slider door when they open it. And as the family comes into the house, we notice that they're exact copies of the Wilsons, like they are their doppelganger. So then we see Red, who was Adelaide's double, who says she could talk. And um, she talks like, oh, like this, and kind of like broken English. So she's telling him, like, you know, once upon a time, there was a girl in the shadow, and she's going to the story about how the girl lived the life, and the shadow lived the, the worst life. And boom. So the uh, clone of the husband, whose name is Abraham, he knocks Gabe out. Boom. He drags him off to the boat, right? Uh, Zora. It stands up and like Adelaide's like, look, just run. As Adelaide tells Zora to run, Red tells her clone, which is Ombre, to follow her. And then when it comes to Jason, she's like, no, don't touch Jason. Leave Jason alone, please. And she's like, look, we're going to have fun with this. Red is like, we're going to have fun with this. We've been waiting for this and we're going to have our revenge before we kill you. So she sends Jason and Pluto, which is the clone of Jason, mm -hmm. to the closet. And Jason is trying to do this magic trick that he can't figure out how to do from a year before. And it's implied that he almost burnt the house down a year before. And his clone is getting mad, like, like trying to get him to do it. Like, do the trick, do the trick. He finally gets the light of the kind of spark and freaks the uh, clone out. And he runs out and locks the clone in the closet. From there, we hear uh, the clone of Jason screaming. And Adelaide is like, hey, that's your screaming. You should probably go help. And as it happens, Adelaide breaks free. She gets a fire poker. And now she's looking for her son. She finds her son. From there, we see that Gabe is on a boat, he's in a trash bag, and his his uh, clone Abraham is driving around in his boat that he got. And he breaks out of the trash bag, knocks him over the boat, and boom, right? The boat comes back around, now they're fighting, they get back on top of the boat, and Gabe basically pounds on the engine because like, it's kind of messed up. The engine starts and slices up his clone, and I guess the clone is dead from there on out. From there, we see the daughter, she's just running, 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 trying to get away from her clone, and you see the clone catches up to her, but she's saved by this guy who sees her clone standing on the top of his car. So while her clone is, you know, distracted and goes to kill a guy, Zora runs and she's out. They all meet back up and then they meet uh, Gabe on a boat and they drive to the neighbor's house. We get to the neighbor's house, which is the family they met on the beach with his Kitty and um, uh, um, Josh and their twins. And, you know, Kitty's telling her like Josh, I heard something in the back, like, can you please check it out? They're looking, they're looking, they don't find anything. Next thing you know, the twins come out, they're like, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And the twins, clones come in to stab him in the neck, clink, clink, kill him. The husband's clone comes in there and stabs him in the neck. The wife's clone comes in there and stabs her in the neck. And she's crawling, she's crawling, and she's like, you know, and she has this, like, uh, Alexa thing. She's like, call the police, and the funny scene, the Alexa thing plays, fuck the police. And as that happens, they just, you know, the clone of her kills her off, and that's it. You know what I mean? We, we cut. They, uh, Adelaide and her family get there, they're knocking, they realize that, you know, the door is open. As she opens the door, the twins, the clones of the twins snatch her up and bring her inside. 
So now her kids are out there like, Dad, we gotta get mom back. So they find weapons and they get ready to go in there. As they go in there, you know, they, they're noticing all these bodies, you know, like, oh shoot, like, you know what I mean? And then they show the twins clones flipping around, flipping around. The little girl, uh, the daughter Zora goes up in there and she just starts killing them. Pink, 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 boom, she's not playing no games. She goes in the room and you see that the clone of Kitty is there cutting her face. Now, early in the movie, Kitty said that she had got some plastic surgery. That's going to be explained later. So, the clone's cutting her face, and while she's distracted, the, the daughter Zora tries to kill her. She kind of blocks it, boom, 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 getting on top of her, trying to kill her. And that's when the son Jason comes in and stabs her with the, with the rock thing. Like, the thing kills her, right? They save the mom, and now they're out of it. They tell Gabe, like, look, they're dead, and we just gotta, we gotta escape. They go, uh... Mad, no, matter of fact, no, before that, if before they could even leave, they realized the boat was done, so they want to take the uh, neighbor's car. But the keys are back inside, so when Adelaide goes back inside, she has to fight off one of the twins who wasn't dead. And as that happens, we see Adelaide is getting really, uh, like, aggressive and killing these people. Like she's almost like she's enjoying it. So they take the car, and then we realize, uh, no, they watch the news, and they realize that like, this is all over America. This is happening all over America. They're reporting it on the news, and you see people in red jumpsuits attacking people. Mm -hmm. So... They get in the car and realize like Zora's like, I'm driving. Like, you have handcuffs on. I'm driving and sitting there arguing. And then uh, Zora's clone pops up and they're like, yo, we got to be out. They pull off. Zora's clone's on top of the car. She stops real fast. Sends Zora's clone to a tree. Adelaide goes to kill off her, that clone, but the she's basically dead, so Adelaide just leaves. They drive back to the beach. And the, the car's breaking down. They got to find a new uh, form of transportation. That, there they see uh, Jason's clone. And he's sitting there, you know... Snapping his finger is something that Adelaide taught Jason earlier in the movie. And she gets out to try to go kill him. In this moment, Jason knows that it's a trap. He sees all these oil tracks and he's saying, oh, let's get out the car. From there, we see that his clone is lighting the match to try to burn it on fire. But Jason, being able to mirror him, stands his arms like this and walks back. And that makes his clone walk back into the fire. That's going to be explained later. Now from there... Red kidnapped Adelaide's son. So Adelaide's like, look, she tells Zora and, 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 um, and, and her husband, like, look, just find somewhere to get out of here. I'm going to go get Jason back. So she goes into the house of mirrors and she finds this trap door. It leads all the way down into these tunnels, you know? And she's just looking for Red. She can't find Red. She finds Red into this classroom. And this is where Red gives us the uh, explanation of this was a government experiment. The government started experimenting with clones and first they did it with rabbits and when it worked on the rabbits they started to do it on humans when it happened though they were using it so they could control the people up top but the clones weren't born with souls they were just mindless zombies so the government basically abandoned them and left them down there and all they could fit, really eat was rabbits and they, eat, they ate them raw and then it goes to show us that everything that happened up top the clones on the bottom would literally mirror everything they did without even realizing it. So if you were on a roller coaster, they show these other clones in the room acting like they're on a roller coaster. When people are eating french fries, they show the clones downstairs eating rabbit at the table. You know? And Adelaide's not trying to hear it. She's like, where's my son? And then they play that horror music, I got five on it, bro, when they're fighting. And you realize as they're fighting, they're fighting like a ballet. Because ballet is what helped Adelaide with that trauma she was Remember, Red mirrored that when she was young, down there in the tunnels. So it's like this whole nutcracker like uh, routine they're doing. And Adelaide's just missing it. She's swinging, and Red's always two steps above her. Finally, they get to the room, and it's just this last standoff. And Adelaide basically is able to kill Red and snaps her neck. And she's enjoying it. And the son is hiding in the locker, and he sees this, and he seems a little scared of his mother. So then they leave, she, she brings Jason, they leave, and they see like all these clones holding hands in a line. All in a line. It's been going on all over the world. And as they leave, there's a flashback that shows you, and here's a twist, that when Adelaide went to the House of Mirrors as a kid, her doppelganger, or her tethered version of herself, the clone, choked her out and switched places with her, dragged her all the way down to the tunnels and handcuffed her to a bedpost. It took her life up top and that's why she couldn't speak because it tethered or the clones couldn't speak so what happened was when they put it through therapy and all that she was able to learn how to speak mm -hmm. and she kind of still had repressed memories herself about it so she didn't really remember what happened back then so you find out this whole time you've been rooting for Adelaide when really Red was the one who really just wanted her life back and we find out the person that we should have been rooting for is dead 
She never got her life back. She never got her family back. And it's like, that was a crazy twist to me. It was like, yo, are you, are you kidding me? And then it ends with the son looking at the mom, not really understanding, like, yo, like, can I trust her? He doesn't say anything, and it just puts his mask back on. Now, it, the last shot, we see that all these tether the clones are holding hands in the line all across America. And there's just helicopters documenting the whole thing. In, right? And I just want to say off rip before I get into this one theory I had that this movie was just phenomenal. I give it an A plus 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 10 out of 10. It wasn't necessarily scary, but you're so engrossed in the film that you just like, yo, like you never want to stop paying attention. You don't want to go to the bathroom, you don't want to leave. You're just so immersed in this world that Jordan Peele is building. Like and, and, and it's just beautifully shot with the colors, the shadows, the, the angles, the close-ups, and the music. It is a well-made movie. Like it's so bad, it's so great that the inconsistencies or the plot holes I don't even care about because of how great this movie was. It, it just was a, tr a tremendous movie. A hit, knock it out the park movie for Jordan Peele. He's two for two. Get out with us. I like Get Out, but I'm more of like a horror person, so I think Us is better for me. Um, but there's this one thing I want to get into. Now the Tethered wore red jumpsuits. Now that comes into play because. Mm -hmm. The one shirt that she had before all of that happened was a Thriller shirt. And if you know in Thriller, they wore, you know, Michael Jackson had the red jacket with the red pants. Now, they also wore one glove. We know Michael Jackson was synonymous for wearing that one glove. It's like that little thing, that was in her memory, and that's what she used to dress up her gang. And not even that. Thriller also, in the video, you remember the zombies come to take over the world. And it's also, there's just two Michaels. There's the one Michael we see, then there's the zombie Michael, or the werewolf Michael. Just like there's two Adelaide or two of everybody else. So the zombies come and take over the world. It's kind of like what Adelaide did with the tether. She's like, we're going to come. We're going to go to the top and take over the world. And the tether knew she was different because she could dance and talk and all that. So it was easy for her to, you know, get them to follow her. You know, because they were looking at her like her as a Jesus figure to, to, to them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and then there's another thing. 11-11 uh, was everywhere. And it, it, it really was referencing to that, that Jeremiah 11-11 Bible verse. And it fit the movie so well. And they had like, uh, the daughter had this shirt which was referencing bunnies and then, you know, like the, uh, the scissors of being two halves of a scissor or a, or a blade, you know, and then she used that to cut paper tethers, you know what I mean? It was just a lot of symbolism in this movie. And then there's this big theory out here which I kind of agree with that I think Jason the Sun was switched out the year before. Now, they say, mention, like I said, that he was locked in the closet a year before and he knew his magic trick and basically almost kind of burnt the house down. And he was locked in the closet or whatever, he couldn't get out. And now, a year later, he can't remember the trick. When they're on the beach, remember, he's building tunnels. Most kids have been sand castles, sand mounds, you know, anything. Not a tunnel. He's specifically building tunnels, which is odd. And even, like, everybody notices, like, he's a little weird. And throughout the movie, he acts like, a weird kid. I, I, at first I thought maybe he's just autistic, but now it's like maybe he was a tethered old son. When we see his clone or his tethered version of himself, he has a burnt mouth. So it's not like he can really like say anything like Adelaide could, who was, because none of the tethered can speak except for Adelaide, because that was a real Adelaide. But it's like maybe he couldn't actually say anything because his mouth was burnt, and maybe that happened during the fire the year before. And Adelaide was always more protective of her son more than her daughter and you can say well that's because he's the youngest but I don't know man I just to me it seemed like maybe she knew that I was a tethered version of her son and she just felt a connection to that because even when they were killing the tether she kind of felt a little bad I guess when you, back, when you actually go back and look at it that's why I want to see this movie again because I want to see how much how many things I missed and how many other things are out there that you can pick up or whatever you know what I'm saying but I think if you haven't seen this movie you're crazy you need to go see this movie. I'm gonna go see it again, like I said. Not like I just can't find anything wrong with this movie. I love it. Um, I think I'm gonna do another video on some of the theories I have tomorrow, other than the Jason one. But uh, I like the message, man. It's basically like you know us people in the middle class, or upper class, looking down to the lower class and just stepping over them and never caring, and the lower class envying us and ready to kill us or, 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 or kill anybody they can that's higher than them without ever really going at the real enemy which is the government even in this movie we never see the real enemy which is the government they're the ones that created the clones and we never see them 
You never see them at all. I mean, Jordan Peele, man, you got my head just blown with this, yo. Like, man, go see the movie, bro. Point blank, yo. It's the ninth Okage. There's nothing else I can say. Theory video coming out tomorrow. I'm signing out.